Welcome everybody to Forza Horizon 5 and today we're taking a look at the 1966 Chevrolet Nova Supersport. Now this is part of the second generation that was produced between only 1966 and 1967 so only around for two short years and uh, yeah this SS version is basically a uh, more powerful top of the line version of the standard Nova also known as the Chevy 2 and yeah this is distinguished visually by the wider rocker panels and plenty of badging as uh, yeah you've got this badge here and it's on the exact same opposite side as well as the Super Sport logo here which again is on the same side again it's also got a short ratio 4 speed manual gearbox for reasonable uh, acceleration and these uh, front bucket seats as well so uh, yeah all very nice and uh, well appointed in there. One thing I do like uh, quickly again is the uh, sideways speedometer. It's always a, I'm always a fan of those ones. Seen them in many a film. Uh, most notable one being the uh, Steven Spielberg film Duel. Uh, but the big distinguishing feature between this and the other Chevy uh, Novas of the time is the engine. It's a three and a half. No, sorry. It's a 5.4 liter turbo fire V8 engine which produces 350 horsepower and 360 pound-speed of torque. Now granted, there are more powerful muscle cars from the time, even more powerful, you know, standard, you know, sports cars or luxury coupes or anything like that from the time, but the fact that it doesn't weigh all that much in comparison to a lot of muscle cars from that period is the, uh, you know, the uh, big advantage for this car, is it only weighs 3,146 pounds, that's a good f between 400 and 700 pounds less than a lot of muscle cars from that time, so even though it's got by no means the most amount of power, it's still a reasonably powerful car while being in such a small lightweight body means that it's, uh, yeah, reasonably quick. So it's got a decent amount of practicality on the go as well for a car of this size. Decent sized boot, still fit a full size spare wheel in there with plenty of room left over. And yeah, you've got your rear seats as well, which yeah, have plenty of room going for them as well as you can see. So uh, yeah, it's a practical car with a, a good deal amount of performance. Looks wise, it's a little bit on the bland side. It's nowhere near as exciting to look at as other muscle cars from the period. but it's hardly an offensive looking vehicle either so uh, yeah but nonetheless let's get out onto the open road and see what this car can do right so as per usual we're at the drag strip so let's see what this car can do before we hit the speed camera and then we'll get it around the track so yeah being a muscle car it's at home at the drag strip obviously because you know the big selling point of these cars is acceleration and good rates of speed so um, yeah as you can see it's fairly rapid for a car that it doesn't have the most amount of power from a muscle car of the period. Yeah, nearly 120 miles an hour there, which is not half bad. And yeah, acceleration is really, really uh, pretty uh, good overall, even in the mid-range areas as well. And even though it's got a close ratio um, four-speed manual, the gears aren't too short to make this, you know, a car that quickly uh, runs out of steam. It's got plenty on, plenty of power on offer. And yeah, because it's quite short, it's actually a really rather quite truckable car. It does not feel as lump or cumbersome as it's some of its other counterparts from the period. So yeah, let's quickly look at the stats before we hit the track. So we're in mid C class, which is where a lot of these kind of muscle cars from the 60s are. And yeah, they are the stats, which are all fairly decent for a car of this type and age, with the launch, acceleration, handling and speed being really rather good. Braking is where it's let down, uh, which is the case for a lot of cars from this period. They typically only have drum brakes all around, or maybe discs at the front, but drums at the rear. Um, but this is saved, obviously, in some regard by the fact that it doesn't weigh all that much, so even though the brakes aren't particularly great, they are at least a little bit better because, you know, the car doesn't weigh a ton either, um, with only the likes of maybe the original Mustang GT weighing any less than this. But nonetheless, let's hear what this car sounds like, and then we'll talk about it some more.
So yeah, it sounds fairly good to be honest. Um, to suspect this easily having one of the smaller engines from any you know muscle car or pony car from the time. As so yeah, 5.4 litres is really not that big in comparison to a lot of other cars. In fact, there were three engines bigger than this uh, from the third generation of this car. So uh, yeah, it's not the biggest engine, but it does sound good overall. And handling wise, yeah, it's uh, fairly reasonable. It's n by no means you know a, a, the most agile or you know precise vehicle going, but it's manageable. It's not you know a complete train wreck in terms of the handling. You just really have to get used to what it is able to do and yeah, work around that basically. Because yeah, you're never going to be able to brake quite as late as some cars. And even though the suspension isn't being used overly used too much by the fact that it's got a very lightweight body in comparison to other cars, it's still not the best suspension in the world, it does get quite floaty at times, but yeah, overall still a more than manageable car, and the amount of power it's got does, you know, make up for the fact that it's not got the best handling in the world, so it can make up some time on the straights, and uh, yeah, acceleration wise it's fairly decent, 0 to 60 in 7.182 seconds, 0 to 100 in 18.177 seconds, and despite the close ratio gearbox, it can do 149 miles an hour, which isn't all that far off the Belvedere, for instance, that we reviewed recently, which had more power and way more in the way of torque. And despite the extra weight of that car, because it has so much extra torque, even though it's only got 15 extra horsepower, it's, uh, yeah, quicker than we are to 60 and to 100. But that car had way worse suspension, and, um, yeah, because of the extra weight, not as good a way of brakes either so yeah as a car to get around the track out of the uh, muscle cars that we've tried out on this game so far from the current series in the festival playlist this is easily the better of the two handling cars but yeah we do have another one that's coming up that I uh, have already reviewed but is definitely the better of the two as far as I'm concerned and that is the 1968 Pontiac Firebird which you can currently get in the festival playlist for 40 points you can get this in the current festival playlist for only 20 points though and yeah it is well worth getting I really really do like this car a little bit of a shame that it wasn't in the game to start with but I'm glad it's finally got into the game via some means and yeah get out there and try it if you haven't already especially if you are into your classic muscle cars from what is clearly the undisputed golden age of muscle cars from the uh, mid 60s to the uh, mid 70s so uh, yeah but nonetheless thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.